Ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to the graphics card market, we have essentially been in a duopoly for what seems like eons. AMD and Nvidia competing against, well, basically each other. And it's very difficult for another company to really establish itself in the space. Now, Intel, of course, have done just that, or at least trying to with Alchemist. And the initial reception of products like the A750 and A770 was fairly mute, mostly thanks to to not ideal drivers. Now, the drivers for, let's say, DirectX 12 games, generally speaking anyway, were fairly decent. However, legacy titles running on, let's say, DX9 were not so great. But things have come along quite well since then. And I think, well, honestly, Battle Mage is now starting to excite a lot of people because of the idea of actually having a decent third competitor, at least for the lower end and mid-range segment of the market. And you can make a very good argument, of course, that for the average person, they don't really want to spend like 1500 bucks on a graphics card, such as, let's say, an RTX 4080 or a 4090. And so spending, let's say, two, three, four hundred dollars on a product is a much more compelling option for the vast majority of PC games. Gamers. To that end, I want to talk to you guys about Battle Mage because I've been hearing some very interesting things concerning this specification and why there has been so much confusion in terms of the number of XE units in the GPU 56 and 64, and also the cancellation, alleged cancellation, of the higher end products. And then we're going to finish the video with a little bit of celestial news. Let's get right into it. This is a paid partnership with BetterHelp. BetterHelp is a great way to take the first steps to bettering your mental health as it offers 100% online therapy. Life can certainly throw you some curveballs, but it doesn't mean that you need to face them alone. With therapy, you can be given the tools and compassionate guidance to help to improve your outlook on life and deal with those ups and downs. It doesn't necessarily need to be a difficult situation you're facing, such as anxiety, depression, or loss of a loved one. Maybe you're just stressed about perhaps an exam, or maybe going for that new job offer, and maybe you just want someone to help build your confidence and give you the tools to better understand what to do and improve your general outlook. BetterHelp is 100% online, so when you're signing up, you'll be asked several questions to better understand what you need and what you're expecting from therapy, and then their platform can match you with a credentialed therapist in just a few days. You can check the link in the video description or the pinned comment down below, and you can not only help support the channel, but you can also be given 10% off of your first month of therapy. Now, don't worry if you're matched with a therapist and perhaps it's just not quite the right fit, maybe you don't gel quite right with them, then you can switch to another therapist with absolutely no additional cost or penalty to yourself. So take charge of your mental health. Mental health issues can certainly be very challenging, but they don't need to define you as a person. Seek the assistance of a credentialed therapist to help you heal and thrive. BetterHelp offers a variety of specialists for a ton of different issues. So if you're dealing with stress, anxiety, trauma, depression, the loss of a loved one, then BetterHelp can help provide you with the guidance that you need. You can get help 100% online with a fully credentialed therapist. So if you are dealing with some issue, even if it may feel small or trivial, don't be afraid to reach out and get that assistance you need. So again, you can click the link in the video description or in the pinned comment below, or you can go to betterhelp.com slash redgaming, that's betterhelp.com slash redgaming to get 10% off of your first month of online therapy and also help support the channel. For Battle Mage, there were a couple of concerns. The first was whether the high-end flagship would either be 64 or 56 XE cores, because both specifications did seem to be correct at one point or another. Following on from this, would we actually see these parts release or not because of concerns over financial viability from Intel? And perhaps instead they would focus mostly on the mid-range. In my last video, I'd said that 56XE version of the card did seem likely canned, and so we would see no flagship, quote-unquote, and Intel would focus on the lower-end variants. But this is seemingly half true. The confusion concerning the cancellation of the G10 part, and you can see G10 here referenced on screen in a roadmap I leaked in early 2023, as well as specifications, actually stem from Intel changing their internal roadmaps 
and basically Intel cancelling one flagship part known as G10, again you can see it on screen, to bring up another part instead which is going to be known as G31. Now on screen you can see a quick specification comparison I've leaked for both variants. Now there are some issues with the specifications for both and I'll go more into the correct details of G31 in a moment but I just want to put this on screen so you can get a general comparison of what I've leaked in the past. Now, in an ironic twist, the specifications of the 64XC variant I leaked date back to March 2023, which actually predates the updated 56XC variant specs that I put out. However, at the time I leaked it, I didn't actually know that the 64XC um, number was for G31. Instead, my sources were attributing this to G10. But after I put out the 64XE specs, several people told me that this wasn't correct. The G10 instead features 56, which again is correct, but, um, well, yeah, obviously at this point, G31 was being released instead of it. Now, the reason Intel had canned the 56 variant was worries over production cost, and this primarily seemed to uh, stem from worries about packaging and the adamantite cache. So basically, I think we've cleared up some of this confusion. The 56XC variant, again G10, was canned due to the aforementioned concerns over production and profitability, as well as perhaps the 64XC variant just being faster. And again, this is going to be G31, and that was green lit. So while the chip started production later ironically the specs actually leaked to me first and the 56 version which had already been canned well basically those specifications started to surface to my sources and i was also sent some stuff but i can't show them because they're watermarked unfortunately those specifications from older intel documents basically surfaced so in summary i think that g10 was a 56 xe variant which of course matches up to the leaked roadmap i put out in early 23 um and i also think that a reason that the adamantite specs are correct and true is because i leaked another slide referencing the next gen gpus again this is of course for battle mage it specifically talks about next generation memory technologies and cache technologies anyway so it seems at this point very likely that the variant now is going to be 64XC cores with a caveat and I'll get into that in a second. The code name for this of course will be G31. So let's look at the somewhat corrected specs. 64XC cores which is double the A770, high 2 gigahertz, possibly low 3 gigahertz. I'd say high 2 is probably more realistic. 256 bit bus, it could either support GDDR6 or 6X, 32 megabytes of L2 and a similar die size to AD103 utilizing TSMC's N5P but it's still not quite right the story doesn't end quite there because there are some architectural changes intel made for battle mage over its predecessor alchemist now because both the number of alus per eu changes and the number of eu per xc changes along with it well let's just say that to simplify things intel compared xc numbers for battle major with alchemist in the documents that a few of my sources had seen so you could kind of say that it's not quite right so you'll see on screen now what's actually happened the basics are that for Alchemist, there are eight ALUs per execution unit, 16 execution units per XC core. And so the flagship, which of course would be something like the A770, features 32 XC cores. For Battle Mage though, from what I can gather, it's 16 ALUs per execution unit. So of course that's double that of Alchemist, but hold on there Buster, because now we have eight execution units per XC core. So basically the number of ALUs per XC, I'm sorry, per EU has doubled, but the number of execution units per XC core has halved. So still, we basically still have 32 XC cores for the flagship. So we can see on screen now the actual total number. So we have 512 execution units, again, the same clock frequency that I just referenced, 256 bit bus, with 16 gigs of memory, 
either 24 or 32 megabytes of L2. I've been given both figures. And again, the die size seems to be roughly in line with the AD103, TSMC's N5P process. I'll also give you guys the mid-range die, which is G21. I won't read out all the specifications here because you can see them on screen. But uh, yeah, basically speaking, we are looking at 20 XE cores. Now, obviously, you can get um, these segmented down. So, for example, there will be products based on 16 XE cores and so on and so on. Now, the performance targets are actually quite interesting because in several older videos, even mid last year, I said that the performance was roughly on par with an RTX 4070, maybe a 4070 Ti or something like that with compute performance in particular being really quite good. But I think at this point, it's still quite unknown because firstly, there was the cancelled high-end flagship, which obviously may be confusing things in terms of the performance targets. But quite frankly, I've also heard a lot of different numbers given to me. As with any performance leak, it's quite difficult to pinpoint exactly how that performance was measured. Is it a benchmark like, let's say, Geekbench? Is it Firestrike, Port Royal? Is it across several games? And if so, what even resolution? Now, I think it will definitely become uh, much more performant than, let's say, Alchemist, obviously. But how it will fare against, let's say, NVIDIA's RTX 40 series, it's quite difficult. The good news is, though, for, um, in perspective of Intel, the only real new competitor will be RDNA 4. N44 and 48 I've spoken about, well, quite a number of times. I will maybe make an updated video regarding um, RDNA 4 soonish. But uh, basically speaking, there's not a huge amount to say about um, RDNA 4's performance. It's going to be a little bit faster than something like uh, the 7900 GRE, probably but it's going to be significantly cheaper for AMD to produce. As for RDNA 5, that comes much later, of course, and RTX 50, well, even if it does, unlikely, but let's say it did launch this year, we know NVIDIA are going to focus on GPUs like the 5090 and the 5080 first, which gives Intel a lot more wiggle room in and breathing room, should I say, in the mid-range. Now, I had already leaked Intel's Battle Mage um, roadmap and we already went over that but I think it's possible the dates have shifted a little um, Q2 but it's potentially going to be Q3-ish this year ironically I think that uh, there's going to be a lot of very interesting things happening with RDNA 4 um, I put out a video regarding AMD's uh, GPUs in January and uh, at that point, I'd mentioned RDNA 4 is probably not going to happen at Computex. It seems that Ryzen and Strix Point are going to be the focus at Computex. Now, RDNA 4, I think, is probably going to debut much later. Probably something like Q3 or Q4 is probably the earliest we can expect to see RDNA 4. But it's going to be very interesting to see exactly what happens there. So, yeah, I just want to finish the video talking a little bit about Celestial. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the codename of Celestial, it will, of course, be the third generation of discrete GPUs from Intel. So, obviously, you have Alchemist, you have Battle Mage, and then you have Celestial, and then, finally, there's Druid. Intel actually took a very unusual step in its big journey, actually, for discrete GPUs, and it pretty much laid out the codenames for the graphics card, although, of course, it well, wasn't exactly forthcoming in all specifications of performance targets. Now, as for um, Celestial, the good news is, to my understanding anyway, um, speaking to several people, there hasn't been a cancellation yet. Ultimately, of course, things can change. Um, it really will depend on how Intel managed to grab market share coming forward with, let's say, Battle Mage. But for iGPUs anyway, I don't think... Intel are going to do something like regress and go back to, let's say, partnering with AMD. I don't remember specifically the product line that uh, Intel did that with, but they did utilize Vega in some um, as an iGPU for some of their uh, CPUs in the past. I can't specifically remember the generation, I'm sure someone can uh, write that down in the comments below. But ultimately, I think that Intel are going to continue to make, let's say, iGPUs and update the architecture. I also feel, however, that at this point, they really do want to capture things like AI and so on. 
Now, to my understanding anyway, Celestial is going to be a both a monolithic as well as an MCM die. But of course, again, things can change up until the last minute. The good news is though, I think that Intel have quite a lot of buy-in. It will be very interesting though to see what happens because ultimately, of course, it's not just whether Intel want to compete, it's whether they can compete. And well, let's be very honest, NVIDIA are doing quite well at the moment in the market. So I think ultimately things are going to be a lot clearer, I think, in terms of uh, the plans going forward with Celestial possibly by, let's say, mid next year, so around a year from now. But so far, anyway, Celestial has not been cancelled for the discrete um, either for gaming or for data center. So it does seem to still be going ahead. The early plans seem also quite optimistic from what I'm hearing, but it's way too early at this stage to talk, talk about the performance targets because quite frankly, I just don't have enough information. But I have heard anything from two times plus over what we can expect with um, Battle Mage, but I've heard that that might be a very pessimistic target maybe for the lower end variants and it could actually be much higher. Someone actually told me quite some time ago that uh, Battle Mage was basically them putting out like a higher performance product and Celestial was them essentially trying to compete with the highest end NVIDIA card at the time, but who knows, honestly. It'll be very interesting though to see what happens with Intel going forward. Frankly, from my perspective, even if Intel largely just focuses on the mid-range and the lower end uh, products, I would actually be more than happy with that because I just don't want a situation where gamers whether it's let's say the RTX 5060 or 6060 or whatever are only able to kind of have NVIDIA or AMD as an option. I think honestly the more competition there is in the marketplace the better. It helps of course keep the price down and drive innovation and all of that other good stuff. With that said guys hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Normal stuff if you did. Uh, obviously a like and comment down below would be greatly appreciated and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.